After Studio One, I thought maybe I would be uh, 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 on Studio One for the, the following winter, for that winter. But uh, Worthington and Miner were still there, and they certainly weren't going to change him. Uh, so my next assignment was very interesting, and it was my final one in New York. Um, the, um, I did uh, the first color hour that CBS did. And it was only one a month. Star loaded, absolutely star loaded, and uh, the best directors we could get, and uh, and good directors they were, I mean, not, not just the best we could. And it was the big new toy of CBS for that year, so it was a big plum for me to get it. It was called. It was called the best of Broadway, and uh, and it the, literally was. It literally was the only. Problems were, well, there were a lot of problems, but the problem was that they chose, the network was very much involved in the eight plays that were chosen to do, and right, because they, each one was a very special event, you see, for them. And so, uh, uh, and they picked only Broadway, prior Broadway hits, but we were doing them in an hour, uh, so that the, we just had the bare bones of a, of a plot. <laughs> I mean, you didn't have time for the jokes. You didn't have time for the nuances. You nothing. I mean, it was. It, if later, if only an hour and a half, ninety minutes had come in by that time, it, it, we would have been in clover. But because uh, I used to do some plays on that, but this had to be done. Well, everything was difficult because, for one thing, nobody really knew how to do color. Color meant color. But it didn't. It shouldn't have meant purple and green and orange and blue all in, <laughs> on the same shot. You know, it, it it was dazzling. And the idea that you would do a room that was done in cream color or something with a tiny little note of color that was what the hell's the point in doing color if you don't? Good? And so we had to put up with an awful lot of things. Also, a lot of very poor skin tone and all the things that we were trying to do. There had to be very few sets out there that could receive it in color. Uh, oh, almost none. I mean, you know, but an awful lot of, from the network point of view, everything good was going into this. When I did say, finally, at one point, there was no way to get all these people that you want, uh, so starlet-studded, that uh, we're gonna have to pay them all a certain amount. He said, on that, they said, just don't worry about it now. You come when you need to, when you've got, got people you want. Maybe we should explain that CBS was in a color fight with NBC and had its own system and was waging this fight, a, pu a publicity fight in Washington. Absolutely. To get its color system adapted. You're absolutely right, which yeah. was probably the reason that they had a very open palm for the show and also felt that they had to get on with it in the best possible way because they were already uh, behind behind time. And what was your routine in, in staging these shows? Well, these were done in, uh, I've forgotten how long we rehearsed. Uh, they had a good rehearsal period, perhaps three weeks. We had uh, not the same director each week, so that each show, so we could, we could uh, vary the time. And uh, we were on camera. Uh, camera uh, time took a fair amount, although it was only an hour. but. Uh, not an hour and a half, uh, but the the uh, ca color cameras were so uh, unwieldy, and uh, the, co the lighting was so difficult, and it all just took ages. It took a lot of time. We also had people like well, for my first cast for the royal family, which was uh, George Kaufman and Morse Hart and Morse Hart. Uh, and please tell us who was in the cast. Helen Hayes, Claudette Colbert, Frederick March, Charles Coburn, uh, uh, the girl from uh, uh, who later was in uh, in uh, Sunset Boulevard, and Nancy Olson. Uh, they they were the leads in the oh uh, uh, a, a young man. Uh, with a name you'd know, but I don't know. And uh, they were the leads. When we did, uh, uh, when we did the, the uh, uh, 
the, the man who came to dinner. A great, a great show to do when you don't have time for the gags. You know? <laughs> we did have enough of them. We had Monty Woolley from the original company because I thought that, that uh, uh, nobody played it like him. Other people had in the interim, but, but he, he was so wonderful. And he played it. We had for the two women, Merle Oberon and Joan Bennett. For uh, banjo, the uh, silent one, Harpo Marx. For uh, uh, the other funny man in it, Bert Lahr. I mean, it was just a street. And some of them had people like Bert Lahr and Harpo had small parts, you know.